pressure rise of liquid dielectric inside a capacitor so we have already seen that once if you try to push a dielectric inside a capacitor it's going to be pulled inside and if you push it from the right side that also going to be pulled inside so if you submerged the capacitor inside a liquid the liquid which will act as a dielectric that will be pushed inside from both the sides that will give rise to the pressure in between the plates so the liquid here will have higher value of pressure than the liquid at the same height outside now let's read also first pressure inside the liquid rises as the liquid is being pushed from both sides between the plates of capacitor so now we understand understood why the excess pressure exists inside the capacitor and it's time to find the value of that so initially the capacitor does not have any charge let's say the pressure just above and below the bottom plate is p not then we charge the capacitor it be let's say it's plus q and minus q. now as discussed this liquid will be pushed from both sides so the liquid level will rise in between the plates and that will develop an excess excess pressure at the bottom so let's call that pressure p not plus delta p now so p not is going to be same and the excess pressure which is occurred because of the capacitor is delta p we need to find what is the value of this delta p so previously when we inserted dielectric from the left one solid dielectric then our approach to find the force was we moved the dielectric by a little distance dx and we saw what is the change in potential energy of the system and that du by dx gave us the force value of the force so here also we are going to do something similar but instead of pushing the dielectric from the side because here the dielectric is already inserted we are going to pull this bottom plate to a distance dx to the bottom we are considering this height as x so when we pull the bottom plate little bit down by a dx amount we'll see what is the change in potential energy of the system and that du by dx will give us the force on this bottom plate and now we can already see that this excess pressure also contributes to the force on the bottom plate so from there we will get a relation between the force on the bottom plate and the excess pressure so that is our approach this time so we are not going to move the dielectric in and out this time we are going to move the plate a little bit down so let's move it by a small distance dx and when we are doing that we must keep the forces on the plate as balanced so f external we are moving it very slowly so that has got to be equal to the other forces on the plate so what are other forces on the plate one is because of the plus q charge which is pulling the plate up and that force is q square by 2 epsilon not a pretty standard result so this force between q and minus q has nothing to do with dielectric so the force is going to be just q square by 2 epsilon not a and this plate is also being pushed down by this excess pressure delta p see because of p not and p not the forces will be balanced only because of delta p there will be one force towards bottom and that will be delta p into a now as we are moving we have moved this plate very slowly the forces are balanced which means f external is equal to q square by 2 epsilon a minus delta p into a where this is the due to the plate and delta p a is due to the excess pressure so we have found one relation between f external and delta p now second we want to get rid of f external so that we will do by writing the how much change in potential energy happened because of this movement of dx and that du by dx will also be equal to f external so we'll put that value of du by dx and equate it to this so let's find what is the u first and then we can differentiate it so let's divide into two regions so one is this region the empty region and second is the submerged region so you can see that the empty region remains the same so u if i write the energy as ua plus ub in these regions so ua remains constant 
So why we are doing that? So that when we differentiate, this term becomes zero. What is UB? The submerged part. It's uh, of the thickness x. So the capacitance of CB will be a epsilon epsilon naught by x. And we are going to, because the Q is given in the problem, we will write the energy in the form of Q square by 2C. So this is CB of the submerged part, B part. And this becomes Q square X by 2A epsilon epsilon naught. Now it's time to find the F external by differentiating it. So we know that change in potential energy is F external into DX. Where F external is on the plate, not on the dielectric, but on the plate. So F is du by dx and this term will be 0 and it's a linear function of x so this becomes q square by 2a epsilon epsilon naught. So finally we are going to equate this to this and everything is known to us so we'll directly get our excess pressure as q square by 2 epsilon naught a square 1 minus 1 by epsilon which you notice is independent of x. So it doesn't matter what was the initial level of the water inside the dielectric. Everywhere in, in between the plates, the pressure is going to increase by the same amount, which is this. So in this problem, the bottom plate is submerged a bit into a water and the top plate is outside the water. We are asked at what height will the level of the liquid in the capacitor rise? After its plates get a surface charge density of sigma. So we have already calculated that the excess pressure inside is q square by 2 epsilon not a square 1 minus 1 by epsilon. Now we only need to find the height, the ex excess height. So initially let's say the height was y, the height of the liquid above the water, sorry, height of the liquid above the plate, initially it was y and then it further rose to a height h. So we need to find what is h. So this is a very <laughs> special case because the liquid particles on different heights are at the same pressure. So this is also PATM, this is also PATM. So this is just, this is outside the capacitor and this is inside the capacitor. So this pressure at this point above the plate, we will write relative to PATM here. So PATM plus rho g into h plus y is equal to P naught plus delta P, right? P naught plus delta P, the net pressure here is because of PATM plus because of the water column. So PATM plus rho g into h plus y is equal to final pressure, which is P naught plus delta P. And P naught is outside the capacitor. So that is simply PATM plus rho g y. So from here, we'll just subtract the both and we'll get delta P is equal to rho g h. And delta P we have already calculated. So we can get our answer h is equal to this. Yeah.